You know, these wonderful words that God gives us in tongues and interpretation are exceedingly precious if you accept them from the Lord. When you have a hearing ear, and when you desire that sincere milk of the word, you'll soon discern that it's Jesus speaking. And a very simple message the Lord gave one day, in which he said, Every moment of the day and of the night I'm thinking of you. And it made such a change in my life. <laughs> Remember, I, I had to go somewhere on the elevated. Third Avenue elevated was still in existence, so you can tell how old I am. Anyway, while I was riding on the elevator, every little while I had to hang on to my hands when I thought by Jesus. You are just now thinking of me. My hands wanted to go up right in the elevator. That would not have been a very great mistake, you know. But God was doing something for me just by that wonderful truth. Thou thinkest, Lord, of me. David says, How wonderful also are thy thoughts Unto me, O God, they are more than can be numbered. To him also it was a great revelation that God was thinking of him personally. And once that truth gets hold of you, you will perhaps turn it around and say, Well, Jesus, how about my thoughts toward you? You know, if we want to scale the utmost height and catch a glimpse of glory bright, something will have to be done about it. And the Bible tells us, guard thy heart with all diligence, for out of it proceed, Jesus says, evil thoughts. It's a strange thing how some hearts are foul. And those evil thoughts ascend all the time. And they bother you. They defile you. They defile the whole man. God says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. I suppose every one of you has forsaken your pipe and your tobacco pouch and your cigarettes and your beer cans, maybe. I hope so. And the women have forsaken their lipstick and uh, their cosmetics, some of them. I don't mean that you should forsake them, but we sort of, I saw yesterday at the wedding, some ladies had carefully scraped them off because they were afraid that something might be said or somebody might not like it if they came in here into a Pentecostal church with their lips dyed red. That's easy. It's easy to scrape it off. It's easy comparatively to leave the beer can and to the tobacco pouch and the pipe. And it's easy to forsake a lot of things and people think they're top-notch saints while their hearts are full of vile corruption. Ah, oh, beloved, that's where either God reigns or the devil reigns. And when God says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts he opens wide his sanctuary and he says let him return unto the Lord for my thoughts are different than yours and here when you forsake your thoughts you know that's a very wonderful call of God to consecrate your thoughts to Jesus what good is this exterior religion what good is it if I don't drink beer and don't smoke cigarettes? I said one time, oh, also 30 years ago, I said to our women, listen, they were very much incensed against some woman that drank beer. They were so incensed. Brother Waldo, you ought to put her out. She's got no, no room here. I said, listen, I'd rather all of you smoked cigarettes and drank beer than... Let that poison of asps flow out of your mouth. They didn't like that one bit. That's okay. 
to have the heart full of corruption as long as you don't drink beer, as long as you don't smoke cigarettes. Why, that's an outward expression of your flesh. But all oh, these thoughts, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And many, many people will condemn others for committing a sin openly and publicly while they have the same thing in their hearts. And God says, the man that hates his brother in his heart is a murderer. I spoke of that one time in a church in Switzerland, and one behind got up and he said, Folks, I am a murderer. Now, if every murderer in this meeting were to be electrocuted, we'd have more empty benches here in our next meeting. We won't do it now. Don't be afraid. But what will God, what will God do, thou hypocrite? First, take that beam out of your own eye. Oh God, these thoughts, how is my heart? Jesus says to the bride, I'm coming to my garden, my sister, my love. I have gathered the honey and I've gathered the spices. And oh, how fragrant, how fragrant is that garden. And he's talking about your heart. He's talking about that garden which belongs to him entirely. My sister, he says, is a garden enclosed. There's a wall of fire round about that garden, and the devil can't get in, nor the worms, nor the bugs. They can't get in. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are what? Honest, whatsoever things are what? Just, whatsoever things are what? Pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise. Oh, that smells good. But wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. That smells bad. But how is my heart? Oh, God says, so shall the king greatly desire thy beauty. It's an interior beauty that Jesus Christ wants, but he creates it. And oh, what wonderful means God has provided for his people to Weed out the thorns and the thistles from this heart and to make this heart a garden for the well-beloved. My beloved has come into his garden. I've invited him. He can come anytime and find this garden, a garden of God, and find it filled with fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ with thoughts that are pure and lovely and just and true and, and full of virtue and full of purity. Oh, God, God would... Listen, would you like to present that kind of a heart to your beloved? Would you really? Then you've got to do a little bit more than just dump your beer can out and uh, forsake your cigarettes and your tobacco pouch and give up your cosmetics and so I found I must admit I have found ladies that use cosmetics that are better Christians than some that would frown on lipstick I really have I found women that will frown on anybody using lipstick or polish their fingernails their hearts are rotten just full of rot Beloved, as a man thinketh in his heart, how do I think? What do I think? The Bible tells me how to think, for he knows my thoughts afar off. But God provides wonderful means, wonderful victories. And what are they? Why, listen, Bible study and prayer. I mean Bible study in the Holy Ghost. When the Spirit of God gets hold of your heart, 
and opens your understanding. None of the princes of this world have known it. That's why they stick their nose into books that tell them lies. That's why they're misled. That's why the serpent beguiles them. They cannot understand. The natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God. But you can. And here is bread that comes down from heaven. Here is the seed of the kingdom. Here is the word of God. And it's written personally for you and for me. And it's quick and powerful. When I was in Hamburg, I admired the lawn of Brother Lardon. So beautiful, it was like a green carpet. There wasn't a weed in it. I said, how do you do it? We don't succeed in raising a lawn like that. Oh, he says, I found a chemical. When that is put on the lawn, it eats all the weeds and it leaves the grass there. Here's something that will eat all the weeds. The Word of God. Oh, to Rakai Bajo, Kelemarabolon Gobo, instead of just reading the things that interest me, to let that sword of the Spirit dig deep, to become a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's where God finds His lover. Most people are satisfied with an exterior knowledge of religion. That's satisfying. As long as they know how to preach sermons. But the bride is not like that. She says, come into your garden. My bridegroom, come. You'll find it tilled. You'll find it free of thorns and thistles. And all this mind of mine has been renewed. Has been transformed has been renewed. Oh, this mind of mine has become the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you. Oh, that's what God offers me. Think of it. When he gives me his word, he offers me his own mind. Now you're going to have a wonderful husband. Marvelous husband. And you, husband, you're going to have a wonderful, wonderful wife. Really you are. She thinks only the things that are true and honest and just and pure and lovely and of good report. When she thinks of her husband, she banishes all thoughts of criticism and judgment. Whatsoever things are true, oh, to have, to have the mind of Christ, is it possible for a human being like we are to possess the mind of Christ, not exactly, but that mind of Christ will possess me. When that mind of mine has been renewed and transformed. When you're not conformed to this world anymore. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus That'll never be unless I want it bad enough to give up my own thoughts. That's why he says, let the unrighteous man forsake his thoughts. I am unrighteous as long as I allow my own thoughts to run away with me. And why is it that my thoughts can be defiled and unrighteous? Why I, I feed my soul with that poison, the strange thing. I hope you'll understand me when I warn against television. Television ain't no worse than my watch. It's what it does to you. That's why. But when the devil puts that thing into your home, he says, I dare you not turn it on. You flick that thing on and presently there's a murder story appearing. And it's so interesting. That fellow with that broad-rimmed hat and that gun cock. I want to know at least to whom he's going to shoot. And you're caught. The devil says, I dare you keep that thing in your house and not be defiled. I've got you by the neck. And God puts the Bible there. And he says, my word that proceedeth out of my mouth. Who cares? Who cares? 
Well, I don't even know. I don't even know what Philippians 4, 6 tells me. I don't even know what John 7, 38 tells me. I don't. I have to look it up. Look it up in the Old Testament. No, it's in the New. Let me see. Now, where's John? Do you know what Jeroboam 3.22 says? <laughs> the word that proceeded, O oh God, my God, my God, my God, my God, it's for my heart. It's my Father who wants his saints to know what is the exceeding riches of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you and Christ will not be in you people it's really a joke the way people pray for a revival they don't want a revival they want an entertainment they want a circus that's what they call a revival here is the revival here's the water of life and God says be ye black ye heavens he have forsaken me the fountain of living waters here it is it flows so freely Day by day, and any time you want to, you can forsake your newspaper for the Bible, and you can forsake your illustrated and your television and your radio for the Bible. In the morning when you get up, you can bend your knees and open this book, and as sure as you live, God will shine through you if you let Him. God will make his own thoughts to come into your heart. Oh, Bible study, how different it is since Jesus Christ sent the Comforter, sent this teacher. The world cannot receive him. It seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. He dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Who is he? He is God Almighty. God, and we don't know him because we don't pay attention to him. Because we don't allow him to speak to us and we don't allow him to engrave his law upon our hearts. Why, therein consists the ministry of the Holy Ghost to make out of you and me a living epistle of Christ written not with ink but with the Spirit of the living God. Come, let me open your heart and see what's written there. Let's see what vermin crawls out. Better not open it. Better not open it. Those rats and those owls and those bats, they'll come swarming out of that heart. Out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. Isn't that a strange thing? You can't talk to people for five minutes, but those rats come out and those things come out. And this odor of death strikes you. Unless, ah, but my God has provided a wonderful, wonderful remedy. Not a remedy, but a new life. A new mind. Let this mind be in you. Listen, that word is for you and for me tonight. And God goes through the whole world, and if you and I don't want it, somebody will want it. Somebody will a missionary tells how in China he had these natives before him and when he had preached the gospel to them he offered them each a gospel of Matthew they felt so proud and he said and when you have read that gospel through you bring it back to me and I'll give you another one so next day many came and the second day many came and one man didn't come for a long long time and then finally came and the missionary said, what's the matter with you? Did it take you so long to read? It wasn't the Gospel of Matthew, excuse me, it was the Sermon on the Mount. He said, no, it didn't take me so long to read it, but it took me so long before I was able to live it. The Chinaman, glory to God, how long did it take you to live the Sermon on the Mount? How long does it take before the Spirit of God gets possession of those thoughts of yours that have been running rampant? You know, your thoughts are not your own. They either stem from hell or from heaven. Either the flesh or the Spirit. Ye are not in the flesh, 
if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And Pentecostal people ought to recognize that we don't need a revival, we have a revival. And the question is whether we're going to live in the Spirit or not. That river is flowing freely, mightily, like a mighty river that grows deeper and wider every day. What am I doing with you, Almighty God, if we sin willfully? After that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. We crucify the Son of God of Christ. Beloved, these things are as serious as heaven and hell. And how strange that these ten virgins went to sleep. It, they went to sleep because they did not stay awake. But oh, God has given us a wonderful means. His word. Thy word was found. His words were found. And I did eat them. And thy word was to me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Jeremiah says. And what does Job say? I esteem the word of his mouth more than my necessary food. If you don't, you don't know your Bible. But, oh, God gives me this sword of the Spirit quick. It's alive. Does it bring life to your heart? Tell me, does it bring to you his word? Or listen, does it bring to you the very person of Jesus Christ? Is it the very bridegroom of your soul that knocks at your heart and comes in to dwell with you? That's what Bible study means. And beside Bible study, prayer, prayer. Oh, how this heart of mine will be cleansed when it becomes a sanctuary. And that's what Jesus means when he says, when you pray, don't pray like the Pharisees and scribes. Lots of people pray like that. But enter into your closet. That means into your own heart. And shut the door. Get alone with God in your heart. We don't have time enough to do that. Our busy life will keep the door open. And all the world marches in and out. Like a, a regiment of soldiers. But, oh, Jesus Christ says, your Father is there. <laughs> Beloved, go, Rahu Galdangelo Bozo, your Father, your Father, he is your Father. And he is there. And what is he doing there? He is waiting to meet his child. And he is waiting to reward you openly. That means he is waiting to sow that seed in your heart that will bring forth fruit like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Beloved, what have we got to do with this world? Tell me. If we don't live in it honestly for God, what have I got to do with this world if I'm not crucified unto the world and the world is crucified unto me? I will be damned with the world. That will be my fate. But God says, as a man thinketh in his heart, oh, I can think the thoughts of Christ. I can. God will give them to me. God will write them upon my heart. God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, will transform my thinking. Glory to God. And oh, how pure must this heart be to please so great a king. Beloved, then your heart becomes the kingdom of God. Oh, to sanctify this heart. Oh, to consecrate my thought will require that kind of praying. You shut yourself in with God and He shuts the door. And that doesn't mean two or three times a week, but it means 24 hours of the day. That's the transformation. Now Christ is on the throne. Glory to God. He has taken over. He thinks for me how wonderfully life-giving are his thoughts how pure how powerful he thinks in me the thoughts of god beloved this is the abc of christianity and unless we learn the abc we'll never advance to algebra my heart has no desire to stay 
where doubts arise and fears dismay. Those some may dwell where these abound. My prayer, my aim. But listen, you've got to do some skedaddling to get there. <laughs>